Hey everyone, welcome back. Today on the bench, we're going to take a look at a Heathkit model ID4101 electronic switch. So the electronic switch is an external device that was created to work with a single channel oscilloscope. Yes, it's hard to believe that we used to only have single channel oscilloscopes, but we did. And being a single channel scope, you can only view one waveform at a time. So the idea of the electronic switch was a way to let you visualize two waveforms simultaneously. And the way it did that was by taking two inputs, on this one they're labeled input A and B, and switching between both of them very rapidly and sending that output to your oscilloscope and your oscilloscope would then be able to show both of the waveforms. Uh, this worked largely in part because analog cathode ray oscilloscopes, the faint amount of beam retrace that would go between jumping from one waveform to the other was so faint that you wouldn't notice it. And so you got two pretty clean looking waveforms on the display. If we look at the front panel on the electronic switch, uh, it has an input section much like an oscilloscope. Uh, this channel's A and B. In the center position, we have the input is grounded, and we have a DC coupling with 110 and 100 volt scaling, and AC coupling with 110 and 100 volt scaling. Uh, there's a gain control for both channels A and B if you need to boost the gain of the signal a bit. In the middle, there's three banana jacks, and they're labeled async, b-sync, and ground. And what this was for was to feed the external trigger on your scope. So this would allow your scope to trigger to either the frequency from input A or input B, uh, because since the signal would be jumping back and forth between two signals, chances of getting it to trigger were not very good. So this was an external sync. Over here to the right, we have a switch that shows low, two settings, high, A and B. Um, this is the rate at which it switches between the signals. So there were basically four speeds that it would switch back and forth between the signals. You would pick the one that gave you the best view on your oscilloscope. And there was an A and B if you wanted to just send input A or input B to your scope. And there's a separation control. And this would control the amount of space between the two traces. So again, get the best view on your scope so you can see the two signals. All the inputs are banana jacks. This comes from a time when oscilloscopes did not come with BNCs as a default. They came with banana plugs. So to use this, we will be using some banana jack to BNC adapters. Runs on 120 current, and we'll take a look towards the end. We'll open it up, take a peek inside. But what you will see is there are no integrated circuits. This is all discrete componentry, and it works pretty well. So the usefulness of an electronic switch nowadays is practically none. You can't really buy a single channel oscilloscope other than some, some you know, made in China things. So you've always got two channels. And you have fourth channel scopes now and all that. So it's not really useful anymore, but it's fun to take a look at. Let me set up an analog scope here and the electronic switch and we'll, um, we'll watch it in action. All right, back in a few. Okay, and we're back. So I've set up now on the bench, I have my Tektronix 2246 100 megahertz four channel oscilloscope. We're just going to be using channel one on it. Uh, I have the scope set to show half a volt per division. I'm feeding a one volt peak to peak sine wave at one kilohertz from my Unity UTG 932E function generator. And we have the output switch on the electronic switch set to channel A. And as you can see, we are, that's what we're looking at. The signal here is showing more than a volt peak to peak, and that's because the electronic switch is actually probably adding a little bit of gain to it. Probably need to go through and calibrate it if I really want, but this is for demonstration purposes, so it's fine. And if I go and change the frequency on the there we go. signal generator, you can see it passes through changes on the scope. If I enable channel two on my signal generator, uh, let's do a different waveform. Let's do uh, one kilohertz, one volt peak to peak triangle wave. And if I set this to B, turn that on. And we can see that we have a triangle wave coming through. So the whole point of the electronic switch is to be able to see both of these things. So Let's go through and do that. So we're gonna go and put this on 
here we go put it on this setting and we can play with the position and the separation and as you can see we have our triangle wave on the bottom at one kilohertz and a sine wave on the top at three kilohertz and it looks pretty good um, this is the lowest setting medium one medium two high so it might be a little hard to see but on high there's it signal looks really noisy this is kind of sort of to do with like aliasing and whatnot from switching between the two of them so again you would just basically you would pick what looks best for you so let's uh let's go up in frequency let's do let's do 100 kilohertz for channel a and let's increase our time base here. And so there's 100 kilohertz of channel A, 1 kilohertz of channel B. Uh, and these are far enough apart that they would never really look good anyway. So let's go to second channel and let's do 50 kilohertz. And this is basically it. This is what the electronic switch did. It lets you take one channel, a one channel scope, and show two waveforms on it. Now, I am syncing. If you notice, we have, we're plugged into the async, and I do have it hooked up to channel four on, this, on the scope, and I'm using channel four as my external trigger channel. Uh, if I try and jiggle, jiggle, if I try, try and trigger on just channel one, you'll see that it's kind of a mess because it's hopping back and forth and there is no real clean way to trigger. Uh, you might get something here, like, you know, move it around and you'll, you'll hit on part of something, but for the most part, not too good. So you want to use that external trigger so that you can lock in. And things look good. Now the electronic switch is bandwidth limited and we'll go through and we'll see uh, maybe it was a 10 megahertz scope that somebody had but these were not super speedy that's how old they are so if we go back to channel one here and let's go to one megahertz and you can see sine wave looks pretty good and let's go to two, three, now you can see that we're getting some, the gain is going up at higher frequencies. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna show channel A for now. So this is a three, this is a three megahertz coming through the switch. This is at, this is at four. And I think the sine wave just starts to look a little squished. Here's five. At six megahertz, you can definitely see it's becoming much more pointy at the top. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and it just no good. So really the front end on the electronic switch really five megahertz is is pretty much its 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 top limit. Uh, if we want to look at another waveform coming through, let's see how it looks. Let's look at a square wave. Yeah, so square wave, you know, a lot of upper harmonics. Not good. Uh, let's do frequency. One. Even, even a one megahertz square wave, not, not really cutting it. So... I mean, maybe 100 kilohertz, I don't know. You could do something with it, but. By today's standards, not, 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 su not super precision. So that's the electronic switch in action on an analog scope. Um, like I said, I think that for, you know, slower waveforms, this uh, this actually looks pretty good, you know. I'm I'm impressed with that. Come back here, move that up. So 
So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to pack away the 2246 and we're going to hook this up to a digital scope. Um, and you can see why using an electronic switch on a digital scope just, just doesn't yield good results. So again, sit tight while I set stuff up and we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. So what I have set up here now is my Sigwent SDS 1104XE digital scope. This is one of the, uh, I like to call them the lunchbox scopes that you're more likely to have on your bench uh, than an old analog scope. Again, we're feeding one kilohertz sine wave. We're looking at input A only and comes through, looks, you know, looks just fine. So let's, uh, let's switch over to showing both channels. And as you can see, without triggering, things look a little weird. One thing you might notice, let me see, can I get it to do something with just channel A? Like that. Ah. So if you notice, underneath, you know, the waveforms for channel A, there's all these lines. And this is where it's hopping back and forth between the two waveforms. If I zoom in more, it's a lot clearer. Let me go to channel two and let me go to one kilohertz as well. And you can see better here how it is hopping back and forth between the two signals. This is because digital scope doesn't have that phosphor to deal with and so it draws everything. Now you can alleviate this somewhat uh, if you go to your display type uh, well, even just dots doesn't make it look better uh, depending on the scope that could be a better choice let's tr see here choir peak no we don't want average I'm used to normal but it looks it looks a bit of a mess what we can also do, we can trigger on external channel. We can trigger on channel four. So we have to enable channel four. And we want to, DC coupling is fine. And da, 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 da. What I really want to do is turn off the display of that, but all right, so we'll trigger trigger on channel four, source, four, we'll say that's good. Yeah, it's, um, it's, oh, there, trace, there, there we go. And by doing that, we can go in and we can change the frequency. And you can see it starts to look a little choppy. Uh, if we pick different switching frequencies, you can really see where it's taking time switching between each waveform. So it's digital scope, not a good option with an electronic switch. And again, you're not going to need it. But this does let you see what it is doing when it is switching back and forth between them. That's a high switching frequency. It's lower, lower. Let's come here. Yeah. And we can, of course, put in a slower signal. Put in something like 100 hertz. And here it becomes very clear what it's doing. You can see see those retrace lines. So digital scope, not a good choice with electronic switch. All right, give me a second to open it up and we'll take a quick peek inside and wrap up the video. All right, and we're back. So switch is an all metal chassis. Uh, on the back, it has the attached power cord. Uh, we can make four adjustments without taking the cover off. Uh, zero set for inputs A and B, and the balance between channels A and B. 
Um, I haven't done anything with this in terms of tweaking, adjusting it or whatnot. So, like I said, probably not going to. Um, inside, if we take a look, we can see we've got make it something plastic here. We've got, here's our transformer coming in. We've got, um, like I said, all discrete components. We don't even have a voltage regulator in here. Everything is done with, you know, transistors and diodes. If we look up top here, we can see uh, our range switch, number of capacitors for picking the switching frequency. This is our this is our pilot light. Over here is the input section, and if we come around here, there's a couple trigger caps for inputs A and B. But other than the circuit board back here, you know, everything in here is just you know it's point to point wired. Uh, we do have a slow blow fuse in here, and that's about it. It's, you know, it's not very complicated inside. Uh, we do have shielded wires running from the board to all the inputs and outputs. So it's good for helping control noise. But let me get a little, a little light here just to there's the four trimmer caps that are accessible from the back. And that's it. It's actually very nicely constructed. I don't know if this was a kit that someone put together. I tend to think not because it it's like looks super clean inside the way it was put together. Uh, incidentally, this is also how clean the inside of this was. I didn't do anything to clean the inside. And other than just wipe off the front here uh, with a little Windex or something, um, that was it. So whoever had this took real good care of it. Um, so I think it was a pretty good find. And I think that is probably about it for the electronic switch. Uh, fun little thing to look at. I may use it and play around with it for a few other things, but sadly, not really much useful in today's day and age with the quality of scopes that we have. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, questions, comments, put them down below. Like and subscribe if you are so inclined. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.